It all started as I was hunting for a ChatGPT-like model that was open sourced of good quality and locally runnable on a single consumer GPU, so ideally under 24 gigabytes of memory. I came across things like GPT for all and together computers, 20 bill and 7 bill uh, chat models based on Eleuther AI's NeoX models and others like Pythia. But then I stumbled upon chat GLM 6B, a relatively tiny model capable of running on as little as six gigabytes of memory at int4 with quantization or 13 gigabytes at half precision for inference. Not only is this model extremely small, it's quite effective at just single query and response, as well as multiple back and forths with some decently sized context. It's definitely not a full chat GPT, but it's shockingly good for its size. For example, we can just ask it to do a typical summarization task, and then we can ask it to instead condense that down to a single sentence. This not only exemplifies a bit of context from chat history and using it and being smart in sort of like this kind of back and forth chat context, but it's also got a pretty good understanding of the important elements, both in the longer summarization, giving us the bits that actually mattered, as well as being able to drop the entire article down to a single sentence pretty well. At this point, point, I, I think most of you guys are, are pretty familiar with the things that large language models can do, so I'm just not going to go through everything in the video, just showing you a bunch of examples that you've probably seen many times with many different models. But there are quite a few pitfalls that smaller models usually have. Uh, first, a long enough chat context will begin to confuse the model, and smaller models tend to just plain make mistakes way more often, way more quickly, or even almost always, if you don't fine tune them or restrict them in some way with like pre-prompting and, and, or like even fine tuning via training. But ChatGLM 6B was surprisingly good comparatively to other models of similar size and even a little bigger, maybe to 10 or 20 billion even. And, and it was good like right out of the box. So I dug a tiny bit because up to this point, I had never even personally heard of this GLM. Doing a Google search or even a chat GPT search, it tells me that GLM stands for Generalized Linear Model. And I was pretty confident that this was not what the GLM stood for in this specific context. So first, I found the original GLM paper from the 17th of March, 2022, which defines GLM as a general language model. Now, from my very brief understanding and first read through, it does seem as though a GLM is still a generative, pre-trained transformer model. But the GLM does seem to be differentiated by bidirectional attention as compared to unidirectional attention that most other GPT models use as well as the use of the Gaussian error linear unit uh, instead of the traditional rectified linear unit or ReLU. The difference of these activation functions is extremely obvious upon graphing. The GELU, GELU, I'm not really sure, I'm gonna, I guess I'll say GELU, is a smoother function with a non-zero derivative for all the inputs. It's slightly more complicated uh, to actually calculate as shown here in the code, which also makes it a bit more computationally intense, so to speak. But the authors of the GLM paper argue that it is worth the trade-off and that the trade-off is essentially negligible when scaled out to these large language models anyways. In general, some research has also suggested that the GELU is also is just more useful for very large and deep neural networks which suffer from issues like vanishing gradients. So from here, the GLM 130B paper, or 130 billion parameters paper, uh, can be found from the 5th of October, 2022. I'll link both of these papers in the description, by the way. If I forget, someone just remind me and I'll put them in. Now, this is the first open source large scale implementation of a GLM that I could find. And again, it does seem as though even this GLM is, very, is structured very similar to GPT-3 and that the main differentiator here is going to be that GLU activation function and the bidirectional attention. So this is this GLM 130 billion parameter model is meant to be comparable to GPT-3, which has 175 billion parameters. But the goal was to make this comparable model capable of running on much more consumer-like hardware. So in this case, GLM 130B through int4 with quantization can run on as minimal as 4 3090s. 
To, to put this in perspective, GPT-3 for inference is going to want something like a $150,000 machine or more, uh, whereas GLM-130B is going to want something more like a thirty dollars to $40,000 machine. Now, I know you, if you go into like the used market or you might be able to get deals in other ways and finagle even less money, but at the end of the day, it's like a fifth of the cost. <laughs> so um, this is a pretty substantial difference on what will be the end hardware to run inference uh, with these models, what will be the requirement, and this is just a staggering difference. We can also compare GLM-130B to models like OPT and Bloom, and at least given the benchmarks that the authors have provided, it does appear that GLM-130B is extremely competitive at generative tasks, natural language understanding tasks, and multilingual tasks, noting that GLM-130B is a mixed model of both English and Chinese, although I would say it seems to be uh, more favoring towards Chinese, but uh, it's a little unclear to me the data that's used, at least in GLM-130B. We'll get to GLM, chat GLM-6B in a moment. Again, I will link both the original GLM paper as well as the GLM-130B paper, as both of these actually have some pretty interesting insights, but the GLM-130B paper also goes into some more depth and detail about training very large models, especially when compared to more medium-sized models, like 10 billion parameters or less, versus, you know, what does it take to do a 100 billion parameter model? Also, one of the other insights that they brought up, which I have kind of felt this way for a while, I haven't seen it in the research, but apparently this is a thing, that there seems to be a large amount of people that seem to think that these very, very large models are all almost across the board suffering from not being fully trained. In my opinion, the first model that I really felt this way on was and is the Bloom 176 billion parameter model. If you look at the TensorBoard graph, it just is it's very obvious when you look at it that training did not finish. <laughs> like they just didn't finish training it. And like all of these other models, including the 130 bill model, um, especially if you want to open source these models or share them with the world, you need grants. You need somebody to sponsor this. And you usually only get a certain fixed period of time to get it done. And given all the other hardships that you're going to come across as you try to do this, it just happens to be the case more often than not that these models just probably aren't actually even being fully trained. Now, this all brings us to chat GLM 6B, which is 6 billion parameters, which as of yet, no paper is offered that I can find yet, uh, but there is a blog post with some useful-ish information once you convert it from Chinese to English. Uh, but I do hope they release a paper eventually here too on what did they do? Did they do anything really different RL RLHF wise? Um, so reinforcement learning through human feedback wise. Um, but mainly though, ChatGLM has 6.2 billion parameters, a context length in training of 2048, and is intended to run on as minimal as a single 2080 Ti. I can also see that there's a ChatGLM main model, so a full-sized chat GLM with 100 billion parameters, but this one doesn't appear to be open sourced yet and is being slowly rolled out to researchers, and it's a little unclear to me if they ever intend to release the full-size chat GLM, but we'll see. So I cannot test this, but the authors note that chat GLM is most successful with Chinese dialogue. Obviously, I can't actually test this, and I believe this is true with chat GLM, the full size, and chat GLM 6B. I can only test on English. Uh, and this isn't really super shocking, given that the research is mainly from a group at a Chinese university. That said, getting back to where all this began for me personally, is I find that the chat GLM 6B model is just the best for this kind of like 10-ish billion parameter model size. But even compared to some of the 20 billion parameter models, I find ChatGLM 6B to be just generally better. Now, I think both all of this requires much more time to kind of dive in and kind of poke around and, and see or maybe figure out what's the best way to sort of prompt some of these smaller models. It might just be the case that the way I'm used to prompting models just happens to work better with ChatGLM 6B, but I just can't help but feel like, man, this is a really cool model. It's really fast and it's really small. <laughs> that memory footprint is exceptional. And then from there, it is a bit unclear to me at this point if this sort of all of these successes has more to do with, say, the GLM 
attributes of the bidirectional attention or the gel U activation function, or possibly is it the multitask training that they did? So again, uh, at least with the GLM models for the 130 billion parameter model, they did things like text generation, but then also t specific tasks. Uh, I think it was like 5% or something was like more specific masking tasks. So it's curious if maybe that has to has some sort of role into it. Uh, also, this is one of the, I think, few-ish models where you have a very, uh, very large body of text of both Chinese and English. And we do have lots of multilingual models, but those multilingual models tend to suffer pretty substantially on something like Chinese because Chinese is such a vastly different language than something like English. And the difference between Chinese and English is going to be just huge compared to maybe English and I don't know, Spanish or something like that. The differences are so staggering that you might even say that this is more of a multimodal model or for sure like a multitask type model. And we've already seen that these doing that sort of thing to these models, you would have thought that, oh, for any specific task, it would be better to just make it, you know, train a model to do that specific task and you'll have the most success that way. But that is proving to be very false, especially as we make models bigger and bigger. It does seem that multitask, multimodal, all this stuff seems to benefit even those singular tasks that they might do. So getting back to how I got here in the first place to use this model, it's exceptionally simple to actually get going. I'm gonna link the Hugging Face space for the unofficial demo in the description. So you can really just, you can just go there and play with it in your browser, see if it works for maybe some of your ideas. But you can also copy that code and run that demo completely locally, download the actual model the way it's all that. You could fine tune it from here if you wanted. Um, you can also just run it headlessly. You don't have to run it through this Gradio app uh, or you don't have to make a chat app out of it. You can make it do other things things. Maybe you want to make an app that summarizes text, for example. So um, you can really just do whatever the heck you want with it. So anyways, that was a pretty interesting journey going through um, all this stuff in the GLM. And I'm curious to see if GLM is going to just simply encompass the Chinese variants of these essentially GPT style models, or will we start seeing much more of this bi-directional attention going on, uh, as well as the GLU activation function? You know, who knows? Like the GPT-4 could have been using GLU. We just, we don't know anything because OpenAI is no, not being open about uh, GPT-4. Um, the other thing that I really appreciate here is it is clear that through all of these models, the researchers aren't just thinking like, okay, uh, let's make a bigger model or, okay, let's make a model that does this and let's just, you know, pick some arbitrary size. They went into this thinking about, okay, well, chat GLM 6B, for example, we want to be able to fit this on a 2080 uh, TI. I think it was a 2080 TI or a 2080, but whatever the case, six billion, uh, uh, six gigs of memory. Same thing with uh, GLM 130B. We want to be able to run this on consumer hardware, so for, uh, on a 43090 setup. Um, <laughs> if you could call that consumer, but it's at least work, you know, consumer workstation, let's say. You didn't need to buy uh, V100s, A100s, RTX 8000s. You didn't have to buy any of these like server-grade cards and pay that server-grade price. And that is the difference between... Um, uh, that that is that like 5x markup <laughs> like the server grade cards are just so much more expensive I at least personally hope that as time goes on researchers more and more continue thinking about things in terms of okay well what would be the hardware requirements of this who could run it what size should we go with be, you know, and start thinking in that way more often because sometimes it does seem like these models are just arbitrarily sized I also really appreciate the breakdown of the major issues that the researchers encountered in the training of GLM 130B in this like technical report section of their paper. They basically go through and kind of like outline some of the major uh, issues, like unforeseen issues that they came across as they tried to train one of these very, very large models. Anyways, that's Chat GLM 6B. Definitely a cool model to check out. Again, links to everything will be in the description. And even if you don't have a GPU to run this on, you can still play with it in your browser. And I, it's definitely worth checking out this like arguably very tiny model that is really good. So uh, all that said, there are still quite a few models coming soon, and there's probably going to be a lot of competition in the space going forward. And even some of the existing models, uh, like from Eleuther AI and to, you know, Together Computer and some of these others 
are still in like active training and they're getting like updates and stuff. So there's definitely going to be a lot of competition in this space going forward. And I'm, I'm super excited to kind of see what other people come up with as time goes on. Um, I'd also like to take another pass at even like the, the Pythia, for example, a variance from a Luther AI and the chat variants from together computer, which those seem to be very intertwined. I need to like do a little more research into those and figure out like, who played what role but it seems like those are all based on these like neo x or gptj and those kinds of models so it's like it seems like a luther ai and together computer are kind of teaming up to make these chat uh variants but at least again in my ex short experience and experiments um i would say that chat glm 6b is the best small chat style gpt chat gpt like model that you can run locally on as little as six uh six gigabytes of memory so that's all for now. If you're looking to learn more about neural networks and how they work, you can check out the Neural Networks from Scratch book at nnfs.io. Otherwise, I will see you all in another video. And also, if you have uh, chat uh, things that you want me to look at, if you think I didn't do something justice or you disagree or whatever, feel free to comment below. I'm curious to see what, what you guys are thinking because there's a lot of these things I look into and... Like people are saying one thing and then as soon as I voice my opinion, like I'm like, I actually don't really like this or I think this one's really cool. And I find out like the public sentiment or just like the sentiment people have does seem to vary greatly. <laughs> and um, it's, it's interesting to hear what other people are thinking and feeling and finding and all that. So anyways, that's all for now. I will see you all in another video.